So, we're looking at the, the southern part. Like, this is a big erosion area, isn't it? Oh, it was a moonscape, the whole thing. And it ex there's a drainage line there, mm. and then there's more on the other side, isn't there? And being close to the road... Anyone driving past and had stuff, they just chucked it, you know. Oh, it was a tip. They turned it off. That's what they were using it for. And we finished up putting this fence in to and lock the gates to keep them out. I think there was a bund, wasn't there? Yeah, basically take the energy out of the water and stop it coming down. The ground but was that, pretty hard, wasn't it? The, the ground was pretty hard, but also there a lot of that soil that you know dissolves and, and basically there was nothing there. So when water ran, it ran. Yes. So Neil suggested we start putting um, the old bales of hay in there, which we did, so that the water coming through hits the bale. And then um, he bought a, a lot of seed and um, stuff, and a lot of that was put in there, and hence we've got a lot of grass around now. And, yeah. So know. do you think, uh, did they also use uh, mill mud? Yep. On that, the hard, like, hard pan? Yeah, there was mill mud. And around. now it's like grass. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's all good, and like one day we'll probably put some cattle in here, but I'm not looking to do that anytime soon, so... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I prefer to leave it like this and let it slowly return to normal. Yeah, so um, there wasn't anything done in these deeper gullies here, no. but there was hay rolled out at the top of the gullies. Yeah, down into the gully, so that, you know, anything going down there, it would trap the uh, material and... Um, Do you think that works? Oh, God, yeah, and it's, and it's probably, a, um, with old hay, it's probably a cheap option. The biggest, the biggest hassle is it's a, a bit of a job to get it in there sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So would you recommend more just hay rolled out in these bare areas here? Would, what do you think else should be done? If we put more rolls in there, then yeah, it'll, it'll slow the water. Look at all the buckle. Okay, so I think we're on the bank now. See how it goes down there? And that was all vegetated up. That's the catchment, and then it runs into where we can see those bare areas, the gullied areas. So there's no topsoil left there. And then into the drainage line where the trees are. Oh, this is a desmanthus. Gee, it's really taken off. So they planted desmanthus as a legume. And wow, a lot of buffalo. And here's some rose grass too. So that would have been planted for its running, its ability to have, make runners and, and to cover the soil and keep the soil together more, try and bind it up. We'll get Samanthus, Seca. Oh, look, butterfly pea. See the purple flower? <laughs> we can put butterfly pea in. This is the drainage line here, this greener part. And certainly the veg in that area there, that was all hard panned. So it certainly um, shows that if you do a good farming job and do the fertilising and the mill mud, then you will get things growing. But that side would have had some topsoil left, just would have been compacted and hard panned. This over here um, is where they'd lost the topsoil. Wow, Rohingya, another legume. And um, Sesvania. So people have come here and gone, oh, they didn't really tackle the problem. What's the problem? The water coming over the land and running into these gully heads. Or was the problem actually just raindrop impact hitting this bare subsoil? And no easy answer, it's probably both, but how much was from overland flow and how much was in situ raindrop impact just banging on that fragile soil. But looking at this now, 
I think the most effective component is the fence. Fencing it off and you can see things are just growing in the channel now. Sort of like reverse the rate of erosion. It's not increasing anymore, it's slowed down and hopefully it'll keep going in that direction. Of <laughs> Yep, Indian cooch in a nice wet season, Garose is tall. And the Eurocloa, which is pretty hardy. It doesn't um, last very long, it'll hay off soon and blow away. But it's a starter. Butterfly pea, Hispania. Little button grasses at the top here. So, oh, these are the salt loving plants. Just like the um, Portulacas. And look at the crust. Um, oh, I wonder if it's. Oh no, that's the remains of the mill mud. So the remains of the mill mud left there. And here we've got the cryptograms or the organic crust. So we've got some cover, and this is so much more covered with uh, life than I saw it last time in 21. And we could see the mill mud was um, harrowed in over on the other side of the bank. And then here was, this was just hardly anything growing here. Practically nothing growing here. And um, there were patches where some hay had been rolled into the bottom of the channel and even a little bit of mill mud. And I'm guessing it was like, you can see the channels there. There's like greening up. It was about in that part of the profile and I think this has kept on growing but because we've got now got grass and legumes growing in the channel my hope that over time yes this will keep eroding but it'll get held up by the the grass and all the organic matter in the channel so actually what you're trying to do is you're trying to reduce the steepness of the slope from here to where it enters the creek down there. You're trying to reduce the slope by, sometimes we put leaky weirs, but if we can get grass growing in the middle, we can do it that way. And then hopefully we get enough plants that can grow on places where there's no topsoil. Here's some old hay that was in a round bale. They put across here and it's just, I mean, it's all hard panned again, but all this soil has come from up there, eroded down, but settled here rather than heading out to the reef via the Bowen River. I wonder how deep that is. And because it's been loosened up a bit, still moisture there, that can grow stuff. Look at that. Very silty. But it's this this here that seeds don't try, can't get through. Hence we put our our mulch hay down. Isn't that terrific? And then in here, it's quite good, isn't it? It's sort of like um silt sized particles and clay I think. Hmm. Very good. I wonder how tall this used to be. Of this here. So here's on the top of this little peninsula there's the mill mud that was put here in 2020 so it's quite resilient. I do find sometimes it's quite ashy but it looks like it's doing something here certainly looking after these plants and then nothing much is growing where it's not. This is organic crust, I think, or whether mill mud helps organic crust develop. Yeah, look, there's organic crust growing on top of mill mud. So organic crust not growing there, but organic crust growing on the mill mud. So probably if you could stick mill mud so it covers all of the bare areas, some way to stick it, but that's why mulch hay sometimes better to mat down. 
this plant here has a beautiful flower. It's a bit like an orchid shape. And I've found it on these bare clay schools where there's no topsoil left. Seems to thrive in this sort of probably sodic soil. And it has a little pink purple flower. I think it was a type of goodenia. Anyway, this one here has been swamped by and holding up a lot of the sediment that's been washing down. So it's actual, its base is now covered in sediment. Natural leaky weir. Looks something's working. Oh, we could probably check down here to see if there's any water come down this rock chute. But as um, Paul or Jim were saying, we really haven't had big rain events. They've had good grass growing in the last, what do you say, six years or something. So there's Desmanthus growing there. Oh yeah, it looks like some water's, yep. Looks like water's flowed through here a little bit. And probably held up a lot of seeds and yeah. some mill mud probably and some nutrients off the, um, the catchment that was rehabbed.